You know, it's kind of surprising that King of the Hill only has two actual Halloween episodes, Halloween and Pygmalion, and today we're going to be talking about the one that doesn't include a man being turned into sausage. Honey, Trip had a mental breakdown and is now a sausage. That's not a better place. <laughs> Hey folks, welcome to Squirrel Tactics. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already, and check out our Patreon and our sister channel. Anywho, let's get into this. Halloween starts in Hank's garage with the guys making props for the school's haunted house. I'm the general contractor of the school's haunted house, and it's my responsibility to bring this job in on time, under budget, and over scary. And after scaring Peggy with Hagatha the Witch... Hank, dinner time. I am stirring in the cheese powder. Okay. Hey, Peg Leg, can you come out here and give me a hand? What is it, honey? I'm right in the middle. Mmm, <laughs> <laughs> cheese powder. Anywho, Hank reminisces about Halloween when he was a kid. Yeah, you gotta love nostalgia. Getting the old bigger candy bars. Trick or treat. Oh my, aren't you boys the scariest? Yeah, man, talk about <laughs> dang old boo, man. You got any candy cigarettes? And yeah, committing small acts of vandalism. <laughs> Come on, push it over, knock it down, quick. Okay, Dale's house is next. And let's be honest here, we all know Cotton only allowed that because Hank and or Tilly cleaned it up the next day. There's no way in hell that Cotton cleaned that up unless it was with a gun. Using a saw for a weapon makes about as much sense as using a gun to cut a tube before. That's how my dad built my tree house. How he cleaned it too. And let's not forget, it's also how Cotton chopped down Christmas trees. Come on, Hank. Let's go shoot us a Christmas tree. Well, Dad, you know how much I love to yell, ready, aim, timber. Anywho, the hills head to Megalomart to get Bobby a costume. Want to come with us? Megalomart is running a Halloween special. If you buy two rubber masks, they will punch out the nostril holes for free. Where they find that the costume choices are less than desirable. Maybe I can be a Dalmatian. <sighs> Halloween costumes are supposed to be scary. How is a Dalmatian scary? They can bite you. Mm-hmm. And nine times out of ten, they go right for the groin. Okay, one, they're not wrong. Elmo, Aladdin, Jenny McCarthy. I don't even know what these things are. And two, I'm interested in what a Jenny McCarthy costume would actually be comprised of. So Hank voices his unhappiness. Where are the vampires and monsters and ghosts? And as someone who dressed up as things like the devil and the T-800 from Terminator 2, I was lucky to have a brother that was really good with makeup. I kind of agree with Hank here. The whole idea of Halloween is scary fun. Candy apples and razor blades, as the misfits put it. And Hank sees this almost mix of gentrification and disnification, where the scary gets pushed away, but so does the fun. Meanwhile, across town, Luann goes to a fellowship meeting and meets Junie Harper, voiced by Sally Field. I'd like to introduce our guest speaker. She's a new member of our church who has made herself known in a very short time through a series of gutsy letters, complaints, and threats. Miss Junie Harper. Now, having been born, raised, and lived my life in Texas, I've come across several Junie Harpers. They are very real people, and if you've ever seen a Second Baptist Church down the street from a First Baptist Church, or a Church of Holy Waters not far from a Church of Holier Waters, more often than not, the reason for this was a Junie Harper. Or the pastor got caught cheating. Either way, Junie Harpers are sanctimonious, holier-than-thou types who are never wrong and always the victim. Be the victim all your life. And she starts off with a pretty basic question. Who can tell me what this is? It's a witch. Very good. And what's your name? Luann Flatter. Luann. You answered that so fast. Sadly, Luann isn't the brightest bulb on the tree, and Junie Harper smells blood in the water. Do you know any witches yourself? Witches aren't real. Oh, yes, they are. Well, they even have their own holiday. Who knows what October holiday is associated with witches, goblins, and Satanists? The correct answer to that is Canadian Thanksgiving. Um, Halloween? Damn, I was close. Smart. Smart, smart. Oh, this girl is very, very smart. <laughs> 
Thank you for noticing. So as Judy Harper's playing Luann like a fiddle, the hills are getting pretty crappy candy, furthering Hank's disappointment with modern Halloween. Thank you, that stuff isn't for trick-or-treaters. It's for diabetics. Well, I'm not going to gain 10 pounds like I did last year. So don't eat it. Just leave it there. No one said you could touch my candy anyway. And we get to see Judy Harper giving a history lesson that's somehow less historically accurate than Braveheart. The ancient druids celebrated Halloween by eating babies by the light of their jack-o'-lanterns. And then they danced. Okay, so as many of you know, I also run a history channel, and I've done a video on the origins of Halloween. I've actually done two of them, and yeah, she's so full of crap, her eyes are brown. I'm not gonna go into Samhain and all that jazz. I'll leave a link in the description to the video if any of you are interested, and there's a possibility I'll end up remaking it anyway. But Halloween is the eve of All Saints Day. Also known as All Hallows Day. Hallow meaning saint, and All Hallows Eve just ended up becoming Halloween. Truth be told, Halloween is no more pagan of a holiday than Christmas. But I digress. We get Hank bestowing his childhood devil costume onto Bobby. Boy, I'm sure glad your grandma kept my old costume. And we see that Hank was a little more into the character than Bobby is. You know, I used to have a laugh that went along with this Try it with me, son. <laughs> <laughs> that there is a terrible devil laugh. <laughs> See, that's much better. Anywho, Luann feels the need to share her newfound, if not completely idiotic, information. Halloween is a satanic holiday. It was invented by the Druish. Funny. She doesn't look Druish. I can't be the only one who thought of that. Continue. No, honey, not Druish. The Druids. Where did you hear that garbage? It's the truth. Trick-or-treating is devil worship. Judy Harper says so. Peggy gets on to Hank, but I'm not showing it because it's just Peggy being annoying. Luann runs off to Judy Harper's. I'm losing my pretty kitty. So, you told him about the druids and the candy corn and he still thinks Halloween is just for fun. Uh-huh, I felt so stupid. Okay, now, Lou Wynn never said anything about candy corn, the candy shaped like children's tears of disappointment that they create when they're given out instead of real candy. So her response isn't totally truthful, but that doesn't really matter here. In the eyes of the Lord, you're a genius. The devil likes to fool you into thinking you're stupid because it makes it easier for him to trick you. But if you think you're smart, you can resist him. Do you see what I'm saying? I'm not sure. Satan, be gone! Now you see? Yes. That. That right there is the scariest thing in this entire episode. Also, yeah, no, Luann is not a genius. Judy Harper tells Luann about her upcoming Hallelujah House. I'm sponsoring a Hallelujah House. It's a righteous alternative to those wicked haunted houses. And Luann spills the beans on Hank's haunted house. Uncle Hank is running a haunted house down at Bobby's school. The school? Tell me more. Speaking of Hank's haunted house, he and the guys are setting things up at the school. Let's get the rise and run of this trough right. I don't want my blood rushing to my severed head. Yes, yeah, the little details that matter, but Principal Moss shows up with Juni Harper in tow, Moss having a problem with Dale smoking. Mr. Gribble, this is a school. You have to take that cigarette outside. Yes, sir. Jackass says what? What? <laughs> hmm. And Junie Harper, of course, having some issues with what Hank's doing. Apparently some people consider Halloween a religious holiday. So? So, our Constitution guarantees a separation of church and state? Judy Harper is very much the kind of person who would use separation of church and state to get her way, but then totally forget about it when it came to prayer and school. Moss, as he's prone to be, is already defeated and just trying to make the problem go away. Ms. Harper has a point. And an attorney. And then Judy Harper proceeds to point out some small issues that she finds. What's the skeleton for? Planning to read fortunes with the casting of bones? A witch? That has got to go. But Hank being Hank, he ain't backing down. I want those kids to have a real scary Halloween. I'm starting to feel like the whole idea of a house of horrors is wrong. Oh, we could make it a house of pancakes. And yeah, nice try there, Bill. But Hank's all riled up. Shut up, Bill. We either do this haunted house the right way, or I'm not doing it at all. And of course, we all know that Carl Moss folds like a lawn chair because that's what Carl Moss does. Hank, we can't afford another lawsuit. We blew our budget fighting wheelchair ramps and left-handed scissors. Boomhauer, grab Hagatha. There's only room for one witch in here. Nice burn from Hank, and Bill is still on pancakes. Well, I don't know. It sure do love pancakes. You know, it's a thing. I swear, Bill and Hoyt are always about pancakes. 
pancakes, pancakes, pancakes. Hank gives an explanation on how he feels, which makes sense because he's always looking for a way to bond with Bobby. It's our last Halloween together and Junie Harper ruined it. And Peggy actually has a good idea for once. You know, there's nothing in the Constitution about separation of church and garage. Why don't you make a haunted garage? But of course, Luann has to play Captain Buzzkill. See, Junie Harper says a haunted house is the devil's mousetrap and fun is the cheese. <sighs> okay, Hank, handle this one for me. Luann, just when I think you've said the stupidest thing ever, you keep talking. Luann is not stupid. That's debatable. We're talking about the woman who was afraid that her baby would turn into a watermelon if she ate a watermelon seed, but Peggy does try to play peacekeeper. So, you can have your haunted garage, and you can be smart. But of course, a compromise isn't good enough for Luann, and Hank makes another good point. But Junie Harper says... Junie Harper says, Junie Harper says, last time I checked, it wasn't Junie Harper's face in the stained glass window at Arlen First Methodist. Hank takes Bobby out to have some father-son time, and Hank explains that Halloween is more than just candy. Treats are only half of trick-or-treat. It's time you learn to give as well as receive. You're not going to throw that, are you? Bobby, of course I am. Now, Hank's plan was to go after Dale's house, but he changed his mind and decided to go after Junie Harper, though Bobby is not exactly on board. I don't know, Dad. This is vandalism, and vandalism isn't cool. Bobby, that attitude is a little immature. Now, come on. He's also not the most athletic kid in Arlen. With a little advice from Hank, Bobby does get better, but he also makes things worse. And this noise gets Junie Harper's attention. I am not afraid of you Satanists! After which, for some reason, she decides to get in her car without paying attention and ends up running over her own cat. I'm afraid. I won't be afraid. I'll stand up to all of you. Also, how did she go in reverse when she shifted the car into drive? Anywho, she chases after Hank and Bobby, and Bobby gets caught on a fence, but Hank saves him. <laughs> and while they're hiding, the cops show up ridiculously quick. Like, seriously, she hasn't had time to call them, let alone for them to be already patrolling. <gasps> Ditch the evidence! And they end up scaring Dale anyway. Ah! Ah! The police show up to the Hill House where Bobby admits he's guilty and Hank admits it was his fault, but Junie Harper can't keep her mouth shut. His antisocial behavior is the result of your whole family's anti-Christian values. Which leads to Peggy finally stepping in. <gasps> you hold it right there, Junie Harper. You are out of order. <laughs> I go to church too, and I have raffled and bingoed and bank sailed my way as close to the good Lord as you. So do not try to one-up me, because I will one-up yours. At a girl, Peggy. I don't say that often, but at a girl, Peggy. Junie Harper tries the Bible verse route, and Hank gives us the funniest line in the episode. The complacency of fools will destroy them. Proverbs. Get out of my house. Exodus. The next day, Bobby sees the after effects of the night before and feels bad for what he did. I'll never use toilet paper in anger again. So Bobby grounds himself, leading to Luann stepping in to relieve his guilt. It's Uncle Hank's fault. He's a Satanist, Bobby. Oh, come on, Luann. That's the craziest thing I ever heard. It's true. Oh, dang. Yeah, Hank is not by any stretch of the imagination a Satanist, but Luann continues. Did your father ever make you drink blood? He made me eat liver once. Bobby thinks back to a few instances and starts thinking that maybe Hank is in fact a Satanist after all. You're a regular Halloween hellraiser, just like your old man. It's just liver. It's not gonna kill you. <laughs> A meeting is held about what went down, which was just a waste of time and money, but we get some gold from Dale. The vandalism upon my house can only be described as a hate crime. Somebody hates me. And Judy Harper has to take center stage using her dead cat that she herself ran over as proof that Satanists were attacking her home. Last night, my house was also attacked by Satanists. How is this for evidence? Oh, oh. 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 o
And with that, Junie Harper ends up getting exactly what she wanted. I just got off the phone with Mrs. Junie Harper, and she said that the city council passed a curfew because a Satanist made her run over her cat. Luann becomes a bit insufferable as Hank gets mad about the city taking Halloween away. See, Uncle Hank, you said I was wrong, but now everyone agrees with me. Nobody agrees with you. You agree with everybody else. Peggy tries to defend Luann, but Hank's not having any of it. Luann didn't cancel Halloween. Junie Harper did. Well, I don't care what she does. Tomorrow night, I'm going to teach Bobby the true meaning of Halloween come hell or high water. And Bobby is still uneasy about Halloween and Hank's insistence in Bobby participating. The last time he wanted me to be somewhere so bad, I woke up without tonsils. And of course, Lou Wan just has to make things worse. This time, he may be after your soul. I'm scared, Lou Ann. I can't help you, Bobby. But I know who can. This is Junie Harper. And she ends up taking Bobby to Junie Harper's Hallelujah House. Thanks for helping me get away. I heard Satanists like my dad always sacrifice virgins, so we both better be careful. Oh. Which I would like to point out has an entrance fee and is run by a company probably owned by Junie Harper which partially explains how she can afford to be lawsuit happy against the school. Meanwhile, Hank and Peggy are waiting for anyone to show up for their haunted house. Where is everybody? I can't believe they're staying home because of a curfew. And we get more gold from Dale. Isn't there one person in this town with the courage to celebrate Halloween? Hank! <laughs> While you're out there, turn off my hose. At the Hallelujah House, Junie Harper makes a terrible joke. First of all, I'd like to say hello to everybody. <laughs> and then starts to lead the kids through the exhibits, the first being about the dangers of premarital sex. I guess the old saying is true. Sex kills. Followed by whatever this is supposed to be. Dinner's ready. Where's Grandpa? <laughs> oh, that's your Grandpa? Don't worry, it gets worse. Haven't you heard? Our ancestors are monkeys. <laughs> oh no, he's eating the baby. Stop him, honey. We can't. It's against the law to teach creationism. Yep, Grandpa Monkey eats a baby as a way to argue against evolution. That sounds about right. Okay, so as quick aside here, this Hallelujah House is based off of real places. They're known as Hell Houses and are honestly a lot darker than Junie Harper's version. Her version is kind of like the Disney version of Grimm's Fairy Tales. Fun fact, the country's largest Hell House is located in Cedar Hill, Texas. These Hell Houses do have skits in different rooms, though you're more likely to see an acted out murder as graphically and gruesomely as they can get away with in the real life version. I have to be careful here because if I go too in-depth on what is shown in these hell houses, I will get demonetized. But suffice to say, they're rather disturbing and frequently pretty bloody. They're literally designed to scare the hell out of people, especially kids and teenagers. Luann finally admits to taking Bobby to Junie Harper's after she bears false witness. I think that it's better for a child to receive wholesome impressions from established religious authorities than participate in rituals that are conducted by people who really don't even know that they are pawns of the devil. And Peggy puts Luann in her place. It's about time she did that. I have taken you into my home. I have sheltered and fed you. But if you step between my husband and his son, I will cast you out like yesterday's garbage. Peggy then breaks the news to Hank, hoping that a fresh beer will help the situation. But he still ain't happy. Luann took Bobby to Junie Harper's house for an anti-Halloween church party. <laughs> <sighs> I came very close to spitting out beer. At that point, Hank has had enough. They wrecked my haunted house, they outlawed my trick-or-treating, and now they want to brainwash my boy? It's time for somebody to do something. So he dons his childhood devil costume and goes out to protest against the idiocy he sees. Trick-or-treat! Trick or treat! And soon others begin to join him, starting with Boomhauer. Put on a big dang old mind, man. Look at this like I'm trying to get out of his box, man. Say, whoa, man, gonna play tug of war, man. Followed by Bill. Dota! And then Dale decides to join in. I am a high priced Washington lobbyist peddling influence. Who wants candy? Finally, Lou Ann comes to her senses and comes out as well. Check it! Good to eat. 
Plus, the other adults in the neighborhood throw together costumes and join in as the group heads towards Judy Harper's, where the kids are being pressured to accept Jesus, which is on par with the real-life hell houses. Okay, Susie, what's it going to take to get you to join the Hallelujah Club tonight? Look, you took the brownie. I didn't make you take the brownie. Yeah, I kind of remind you of a car salesman, don't it? Bobby ends up signing up. Hey, everybody, listen up. Bobby Hill has joined the Hallelujah Club. Hallelujah, Bobby! Can I have another brownie? Right as Hank and the crowd show up. Hey, Bobby! Go away, Satan! Hank defends his wardrobe and Junie Harper acts self-righteous as usual. Bobby, it's just a costume. There is a curfew in effect, Mr. Hill. But I guess you have no respect for man's law either. I've had enough of this nonsense. And thus begins the tug of war between Hank and Junie Harper over Bobby. Come on, son, let's go trick-or-treating. He will not because he is a good boy. Knowing Bobby, Hank takes the prop comedy route. I just wanted to spend Halloween with my son, but I guess I can't do that this year. It just tears my heart out. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Then Hank tries to reason with him. Come on, Bobby. Halloween's just no fun without you. And the two go back and forth before Bobby stops them. Bobby, if you leave now, you'll never get the key to the kingdom. Come on, son. Let's get some candy. You'll go to hell. You'll get candy. Hell. Candy. Hell. Candy. Stop. I don't care about candy. I just want to be with my dad. Afterward, Junie Harper shows her true colors as Bobby and the other children leave. Bye. And they head off into the night with Bobby admitting that he does care about candy. Hey, Dad, I was just kidding before. I care about candy. I care a lot. And Luann closes out the episode with a heartfelt holiday greeting. Happy Halloween, everyone! So, hot take here. Halloween is an iconic episode, but it's not one of the show's funniest. It has its funny moments. Hank's Exodus line is probably the funniest in the episode, but overall, for an early season episode, the laughs are kind of lacking. We do get a good look at the anti-Halloween movement, though more often than not, churches hold a fall festival or a trunk or treat rather than try to ban the holiday altogether. Then again, most churches aren't filled with people who aren't quite the Bible thumper that Junie Harper is. Like I said earlier, Junie Harpers do exist, and they do a great job of showing what people like her are like, and in the end, the episode boils down to the relationship between Hank and Bobby, both of whom just want to connect with the other. Overall, it's actually a pretty good Halloween episode, especially for being their first of only two, and luckily we never see or hear from Junie Harper again, probably because she moved on to the next town to continue her righteous crusade of hypocrisy and moral superiority. I mean, she's got a business to keep open here. The complacency of fools will destroy them. Proverbs. Get out of my house. Exodus.